Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to create our first application with Flask. Now, Flask is uh, a Python web framework that is going to help us, that is going to allow us to create web applications. Now, before diving into the code, we need to go over what actually Flask is, just a little bit of theory. Uh, now, Flask is a Python micro framework. Uh, for creating web applications. The reason that it is called micro is because it is a small and clean framework, uh, which basically means you have minimal amount of features, which results in minimal amount of code. The applications that you create with Flask are going to be very simple and clean as far as the, their code bases are concerned. And you can code your entire application in one file and the code will still be clean, understandable, and of course, manageable. Now, Flask is something called an unopinionated uh, framework, which basically means that this framework never enforces its conventions on you, which increases the flexibility of creating applications with it. This feature makes it very different than, let's say, a Django framework, a Django, the Django framework in which you have to follow certain criteria or conventions built by the Django team. Now, due to its small size, Flask is also well documented and is a very popular Python framework for creating web applications. Now, Flask has a, uh, two primary components. One is Jinja and the other one is Workzug, I think. Uh, it is German, so it's, it means something like a tool. And Jin Jinja is going to be used for creating templates HTML templates and Jinja is one of the most powerful templating engines for Python and this tool this second component uh, this tool is going to allow us um, to have some features to be able to work with HTTP and routing that maps URLs to Python functions we're going to talk about that a lot during this section so don't worry about it we do have some other features such as a development server debugger unit testing a unit testing, we are not going to talk about it because it's way beyond the scope of this course, this entire Python course. But we are going to talk about development server and the debugger a little bit. Development server, that is something that we are going to um, talk about it and work with it throughout this section. And now that we are done, let's go ahead and let's try to install Flask. And uh, the way that I'm going to install it, I'm going to create a virtual environment and I'm going to install Flask there. So I'm going to say pip env, pip env install Flask. So this is the command to install Flask. Uh, I think I could copy it and put it here. Installing Flask. Okay, I'm just going to write it here as well. So pip env install flask. And that's it. So I'm just going to hit enter. Uh, this is going to create a virtual environment for us. So you can see we don't have anything else here. We just have this creating our first flask app.py file. And now this is going to create a, this virtual environment. I'm going to grab the path to it. I'm just going to copy it. Hopefully this time I just copied it. And I'm going to initialize this or activate this uh, virtual environment as well. There we go. Let's select that virtual environment from here as well. And there we go. So bottom left corner, you can see that we have a full stack web application with Flask and introduction. Perfect. So within the pip file, if we take a look at it, we have installed Flask and all of its uh, containing packages and modules. So now that the Flask is installed, I'm just going to clear this. I'm going to bring this down. I'm not going to close it. I'm just going to put it there. So uh, the way that we can work with Flask is we are just going to import it. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say from Flask. So this is the uh, this is the module that we have installed. From here, we are going to import the Flask class, which has all the features that allows us to create a web application. Now, the first thing that, uh, now in this lecture, basically the goal is to just create a web application and in, in like, like very simply. So first off, I'm going to create a Flask application and I'm going to grab the Flask class and I'm going to set it to the name variable or name module that we have been talking about. 
Now, this is going to be a flask constructor, which creates a global flask object that we can pass to the uh, constructor um, uh, by the name to this to this variable that we can pass. The application, uh, which in most cases is just uh, uh, the application, which in most cases that we're working with is basically called Dunder name. Now, Dunder is basically double underscore simplified as double under or dunder dunder name and this is a very special variable that contains uh, the name of the current module and in this case dunder name passes the name of the file um, which is this name that we have creating our first flask application uh, and um, at the heart of this flask application there is a Flask application object, and this object represents our web application. So we created an app object. We grab the Flask uh, class, the and we created uh, a app a app object through this constructor. And when we created that, we set that constructor or that web application. That constructor is basically our web application. We set it to the current module that we are working with. And in most cases, what is the current module that we are working with? It is the Dunder name. So that is the only thing that you need to take away from here. Now I'm going to create uh, a decorator here. So we have app.route. This app.route is available, is made available to us by the Flask framework. So I'm just going to provide two spaces here and I'm going to say, so I'm just going to create a function and I'm going to call it welcome. Um, I'm just going to say welcome and I'm going to say return. This is my very first Flask app. I'm just going to save that. Now to be able to run this, I'm going to install that as well. Now to be able to run this, we need to... Um, grab this application and call a method run on it so i'm going to say if the current module which is the name equals the main module that we are working with we have talked about this before then i'm going to grab the app and i'm going to run it now this is going to run for us a development server and it is like highly recommended not to use development servers in production but it is uh, good for teaching purposes, so that's why we are going to use a development server for teaching purposes. Within this development servers, server, I want, I want a, the debugging feature to be active as well, so I'm just going to set it to true. I'm going to save this file, and I'm going to run it, and then we are going to go over what this is. I'm just going to run it first. So I'm going to say python uh, one dot creating. Uh, one dot creating our first very long name i know our first uh flask app.py just save it let's just run it no module name flask i'm just going to save that so we have selected this so this is chapter 39 let's select this module let's select that interpreter why is it going back to that one? So there we go. Let's just save that. I'm going to run this application again. It again says there is no module named. Hmm. Let me just. Hmm. Now, do I have to restart this? So now you can see that it is not installed globally. So I'm just going to select that. It is there. So I'm going to say clear. Let's run this again. It says no module named Flask, but it is not throwing any error in there. So let me save that. I'm going to close this file and I'm going to reopen it again with VS Code. I'm not sure what is the problem in here. And I'm going to run this file again. It says no module named Flask, even though we have installed Flask in here. So we do have Flask in here. Python version name package. Let me take a look at the Flask in here. There we go. So we have Flask and the version is 1.1.2. This is the version of the Flask that we have installed in here. There could just be one other explanation for this. So I'm just going to try that and I'm sure that is going to work. 
because if I if I remember we have not actually activated the virtual environment so I'm just gonna say pip and shell I'm gonna clear this I'm gonna exit out of this environment for now because here I can see I've selected this uh, this is actually the other server that is running I'm gonna select the environment which we have just created right now and that is the name of this chapter you can see full stack web application I'm gonna close that as well so within this environment I'm gonna say pip env pip env shell so this happens to the best of us let's just clear this let's just say clear now I'm gonna run the Python uh, file and now you can see that this is very cool so I'm just gonna bring this up for you I'm gonna zoom in a little bit now here you can see that when we ran our file it says serving flask application so this is the lazy loading environment production but it says warning this is a development server do not use it in production deployment uh, use a production WSGI server instead basically what it says is you can use like something called a green unicorn uh, which is which allows us to deploy our webs uh, our application to the internet we're not going to cover that that is way beyond the scope of this course so we can see that the debug mode is on it says restarting with stat debugger is active debugger pen and then it says running on this uh, port this uh, address this URL and it says press control C to quit so now our server is running if you want to quit the server you're just gonna grab control and press C and now you can see that the server is not running again if you wanna uh, make the server run then you're just gonna call this file again and I can see the server is running so I'm just gonna hold control and I'm gonna click and you can see that this is the page I'm going to close this application because we just need one server to run within the URL you can see that we have I'm just gonna this is the local host 127.0.0.1 and this is the port on which this application is live and it says this is my very first flask application we can inspect it as well so let me just put this on the bottom there we go and if I bring this up you're familiar with this window and it says this is my very first flask application I'm gonna keep this uh, uh, developer tools open and I do suggest for you to keep it open to just go ahead and check out your code your pr progress and how basically it is going to fit into this entire picture I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because we are going to be working with a lot of code that's why it's the level of zoom is going to be this much there is something else that you can see that whenever we basically went to that URL it says that to this IP address we made a get a request and this is the uh, HTTP get request that we made to this address and what is the status of it the status is 200 which means that it was successful now you might be thinking okay what is this part now this part we know that it is a decorator and this part is basically a function now this decorator what it does is it is going to convert the function below it from a function to a view function so view function is a word that I'm going to use a lot throughout this section now um, app route itself this is an attribute of the app object which we made in here so this app route is an attribute of this app object this app object that we have created there and we use it to decorate our welcome function now um, the effect of this is that we are assigning a URL to our function and in this case the URL that we are trying to assign is the slash which is the so-called root URL of our application now to see this in effect we need to run our application and we need to provide this URL at the end of the URL that is in the browser URL address now the what the decorator actually does is it is going to apply the mapping to our function and this decorator itself is going to be a special kind of function call that, that we can pass in arguments and those arguments are going to be URLs for different pages all right so just to wrap everything up we have a simple function 
and then we have a decorator. This decorator is a, an attribute of this AMP object that we have created, and this is going to convert our function from a normal function to a view function. What the view, view function does is, now let's, uh, let me give you like a real world kind of scenario. Now you create an application, right? And the user goes ahead and visits that website, that application that you've created. Whenever the user tries to visit it, what actually happens that the URL within the app.route, which in this case it is just a slash, that is going to be um, uh, that is going to be written within the URL that the user is trying to browse, and then and in that case, the browser is going to send a request for this URL to our Flask server. And in the terminal that I've highlighted, this is our Flask server. That's why you can see that we received a GET request, a GET HTTP request with a status of two hundred. And then our Flask server, in turn, is going to call our view function. I'm just going to go over this this concept one more time because that is something that we are going to talk about throughout this section. Uh, we are going to pass in a URL to our app that route. That URL is going to be searched by the user. When the user searches for that URL, a request, an HTTP GET request, is going to come to our server, to our Flask server. And then that Flask server will call our view function. What view function? You might have like 100 view functions. The view function to which that URL belongs, that view function will be called. And then this is how actually this application is going to work. Now you might be wondering, okay, what is this slash? This slash is actually um, something that you cannot see. So if I provide a slash here, let me remove the rest of it. So if I provide the slash and if I hit enter, you can see that we basically get redirected to the home page. The slash is basically the root URL that we have in our web applications. So every URL that we are going to create is going to have this root as a prefix for it. So you cannot create a URL without this prefix, this slash. So this is the root whenever you open the application. And let's say you open up Facebook. What is the main page or the home page of the Facebook? That is your profile page, right? Think of it like that. That profile page has as a root a slash in the server that you're actually trying to work with. I know this lecture has gone a lot lengthier than I actually expected it to be. And... Um, I just want to make sure that uh, this is our when this is our first full stack application you are very comfortable understanding how all of these pieces they come together because we have talked about a lot of stuff like literally a ton of stuff and we have covered python sql we have talked about html css and then this so this is where all the pieces of the puzzle are going to come into place uh, are going to come together and they're going to create a wonderful picture, a wonderful multi-page full stack application. That's why I want to make sure that you really understand what is happening behind the scenes, what we are actually trying to do. Now, there is another way of actually running our application and that is you can just go ahead and copy that and you can just come in here and you can just paste it and you are going to be redirected to that page. It's okay, you can just hold control and click or just copy that URL, paste it in here, and you will be redirected to that page. So with this, our lecture comes to an end. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how you can run, how you can run a development server.